Hello scrappers. It's time for another tear down, scrap out, depopulate and sort out the bits video. And the victim we have up on the autopsy table today is a Juniper Networks J4350 switch of some sort. I really don't know much about this piece of equipment. I don't think I've ever taken apart a Juniper Networks um, switch or anything before. The only thing I do know about this is the people I got it from told me it was broke. So I didn't even bother trying to research it for resale since it's broken. So it's just going to get scrapped out for whatever golden goodies it has inside. So hopefully it has a lot of golden goodies inside. Looking up front, it's only got like one module installed out of uh, six slots. So hopefully the main board inside has some good stuff on it. Because we're not going to get a lot of module love out of it today. So looking around on the front. What do we got here? Well, this looks like yeah, fan input. Okay, no filter. wonder if that contributed to, to its premature demise. Got one module installed with it looks like four Ethernet connectors on it. Down here we got four more. And a console port and an aux port and a couple of USB ports. So all these ports will have some gold pins in them. So that's nice. It's a good start anyway. Let's go around back and have a look back there. Well, nothing much to see here. Just a fan inlet, uh, some slits for air, power connector, and a switch. So that's it. Nothing on the sides. Okay, let me flip it over and we'll look at whatever's on the bottom. Well, the bottom's pretty blank except for one label. Let me see here. Get a look at it. Come on, focus you. There we go. Made in China. This thing has the look of old equipment. Heavy steel box, painted gray. But uh, it may not be as old as the last thing I took apart. I don't know. We'll see. I always, I'm always interested in finding date codes and things, so we'll see if we can find some in this and see how old it really is. Alright, let me get the camera up on the tripod, flip this back over, and we'll get on with the disassembly. See what we got here. Um, what am I going to need to get this one module out? Looks like a flat blade screwdriver. So all the blank plates are held in with Phillips, but this one module has slotted screws. Okay. Well, not a whole lot to that, is there? Well, you know what, though? There's some gold plating on that board. That's a nice little bonus. Some gold pin headers. There's gold in here. In these, There's gold pins inside this connector, and there's gold plating on the RFI shielding around the connector. Okay. So that is nice. Got a couple of heat sinks covering something. I wonder if I can get those off. See what's underneath. Ah, flat packs. I was ah, there's a gold corner BGA. I was hoping they'd both be gold corner BGAs. One's a flat pack, one's a gold corner BGA. Well, they both have gold. This will just have more. Got a few other tiny little um, ICs on this board. A couple of uh, I don't know what those are. Power regulators, maybe. This might be a PoE. I don't know. Can't really tell whether it's PoE. So it might be power regulators for PoE. What are these little things? Ah, those are oscillators. Got two 25 megahertz oscillators, not gold band, unfortunately. Here's another one. Another 25. Not gold band oscillators, but still they'll go in my oscillator collection when I depopulate this board. Okay, not a great board, but it's got some got some nice stuff going for it. Alright, so let's see. Let me get the rest of these blank plates off. Sure, they'll just be steel for the recycling. Yep, steel. Okay, all right, now let me see if I can get the lid of this thing off. Looks 
looks like okay it looks like we got screws across the back and along both sides hopefully that will uh, free up the lid sometimes it's hard to get in these things this looks like it might be fairly straightforward I know fairly straightforward if I don't strip the screws I want to come out there we go okay so I get the rest of these screws out without stripping them Okay, and off comes the lid. Nice. Ah, all righty. What have we got here? Well, looks like we've got a lot of uh, duct work for air management, but I also see the gold corner BGA down here. I see a compact flash card. Oh, a whole line of gold band oscillators. There's two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve, fourteen, sixteen of them. Wow. I see a lot of gold plating on the board. Um, see if I can get you a little closer here so you can see what's going on inside here. So we got uh, gold band BGA over here. We got a compact flash card. Got lots of things with heat sinks on them. Got uh, four RAM sticks. Got a whole line down here. Of gold, but two lines of gold band oscillators. Um, power supply over here. Looks like a riser board over here. I hope there's a lot of gold pins on that riser board. Okay, so what I think I shall do is try and get all this duct work out of the way so I can get a good look at what I'm dealing with and how to get it out of there. This is interesting. This might turn out to be nice piece of equipment to scrap out. Let's see, it's got tabs holding it in two. And then, oh, that's aluminum. Nice. Okay. It's not all steel. That's aluminum. Let's see what we got here. Oh, wow. That is a monster heat sink. I wonder what it is covering. That is a monster copper and aluminum heat sink right there. Can I get it off? I can but try. And man, I just took all my copper and aluminum heat sinks to the scrap yard a few days ago. I guess I'm starting another pile. I had a whole huge pile of them when I scrapped out a whole bunch of PCs that had copper and aluminum heat sinks in them. Wow, look at that. Look at that, how thick that copper is. Holy moly. This thing must weigh five pounds, easy. Okay, and it looks like we've got some sort of uh, Pentium type processor here. Let me, um, it's got uh, heat transfer goop all over it. Let me wipe that off, pull it out, and then we'll get a look at it. I'll be right back. Okay, wiped all the goop off. Let's pull it out and see what we've got. I wonder, what is it? It is a Pentium 4 3.4 gigahertz. That is a fast chip. It's a little old, but it's a fast chip. No wonder it's got the big heat sink on it. I'm sure it was producing a lot of heat. I wonder if there's a resale, any resale value in this. Even though the whole thing is broken, and I have a thing about reselling broken equipment because, you know, 
you know, I'll put it on eBay and I'll even say on there, okay, it's broken, it's selling it for parts only. Inevitably, the person who buys it is buying it for the one part they need and that's the part that's broken and then they're not happy and they leave bad feedback or somebody buys it who doesn't notice the parts only and they're unhappy and they leave bad feedback. I generally don't sell broken equipment on eBay, but you know what? There's a lot of stuff here that's probably not broken. I mean, I think the processor's okay. And uh, we've got some RAM sticks here. Get them out. What do we got here? 512 megabyte. This looks like fairly common stuff. Sometimes uh, IT equipment has specialized RAM sticks in it that, that are worth reselling. But this looks pretty pedestrian, actually. This looks like a couple generations old laptop um, memory. One thing I do like about it is there's a lot of gold plating on these RAM sticks. A whole lot of gold plating. Aside from the RAM chips themselves, which have a lot of gold in them, and the fingers, there's a lot of other gold plating there. Okay, so they've got that. Um, there's a compact flash card down here. I'm going to figure out how to get it out. How does that come out? I think you need three hands to get that out of there. Hmm. weird they've got it in a place where it's very hard to get to usually they'll put them where you can change it out easy enough um, hmm not obvious from the markings on it what the capacity is maybe one gig I don't know it's not real obvious I might have to uh, Google that part number and see for sure. The 1G might just be part of the part number, or that might be representative of the capacity of the uh, compact flash. I don't know. I'll have to Google that. And there's a weird module down here in its own uh, socket, too. Let's see if I can get it out. This is a weird socket. Um, ow. It's also very sharp. Okay. Now oh, I see. There's a screw I need to take out first. Then it'll come out of the socket, hopefully. There we go. Don't know exactly what this is, but it's got a gold corner BGA on it. It's got a gold band oscillator. It's got a lot of candle and capacitors. And it's got some gold plating both fingers and plating on the back here. So that is nice. Nice. Okay. So let me give you another view of the uh, motherboard here. So here's the processor socket. The compact flash was in here. That module came out of here. The RAM sticks came from over here. Alright, I'm gonna... Let's see. I think what I shall probably do is take the motherboard out before I try to do any more. I was going to take off these heat sinks and see what's under them. Hopefully lots of gold corner BGAs. But I'm thinking maybe I will just uh, see if I can get this board out and then uh, disassemble it up here on the table. We'll see. Hopefully it doesn't fight me as bad as the last thing I took apart. Okay, I guess I forgot to hit record, sorry, when I took the fan tray out of the back because it was in the way to get the, the board out and there was a little piece of metal over here in the way of getting the board out. So I took those out. So you haven't missed much. Um, three 12-volt plastic fans, no real use to me. They'll go into recycling like most of my fans do. Um, so, now that I've got that stuff out of the way, I can see that... Uh, We've got connectors here that connect to a separate board. I don't know how well this is showing up on camera, but uh, 
we got a separate board up here underneath these uh, carriers for the modules that's connected to the main board with some pretty big connectors which I'm sure are just full of probably hundreds of gold pins but if I turn it around this away I hope you can see looking down in here the connectors where the modules plugged into have just tons of gold plated pins in there so that's that's really good we're getting some gold today so I just got to continue disassembling this and see if I can get these boards out of here and we got the riser board over here between these two boards so got three boards to try and get out All the screws that's all the screws is it gonna be nice and unplugged now no it couldn't be that simple could it ah you know what I think I see the ends of some bolts coming through with nuts on them that are holding the riser board and this board together. Now there are a whole lot of screws holding the riser board in, including some that are going to be really difficult to get to. So let me see if I can get those nuts off. And if I can get the nuts off, I should be able to pull this main board out. Then I can work on other things. So I'm going to need to find some nut drivers that will fit that and uh, see if I can get that out. Uh, nothing's ever easy. Upon further review, not only are they using different sized nuts on the two nuts holding this all together, I don't seem to have a nut driver that fits that one. And even if I did, it's really, really, really hard to get to. I mean, this one's not easy, but I'm managing it. I'm thinking I might have to bite the bullet and take the uh, try to get the uh, riser card unbolted from everything but boy there are a lot of screws holding it in I might have to see if I can take the power supply out although I don't know if taking the power supply out is going to free up enough space okay I got that nut off I can't even get that one started coming off oh and there's a third nut now I see Nice. Thank you, Juniper. Oh, the field service guys must have had a blast working on these. Actually, that doesn't have a nut. It's just a stud sticking out. You want the nuts on this side over here. Okay. I just love consistency. Too bad there's not much of it in the way they built this. Different size nuts. Nuts on one side versus the other. Okay. Let's see. Do my eyes deceive me? No, there's another one. Okay. Wait a minute. Have they used yet another size nut? No. Okay. I'm getting it. Just this heat sinks in the way. I can't get the nut driver in there towards it. Okay, so that's off. Yeah, so some of these studs have nuts on this side and some of them have nuts on this side. That is really, really strange. Well, let me start taking the screws out that hold the riser board in. See how many of them I can get out. Of course, the heat sinks are in the way again. Maybe I should take them off. Now, these are the ones I'm 
we're not going to be able to get to with the screw gun. And of course, there's the wrong kind of Phillips to get in there. I just bend this. I might just be able to bend this thin steel out of the way and get the screw gun in there. Oh, there's always one. There's always one. Always that one screw that doesn't want to come out and just wants to strip. Okay, so does that free up the riser card? Okay. Should free up the riser card. Yes! Look at that, success! All right, we got the main board out. Hey, the main board's kind of, sort of double-sided. It's got a few components on the back. Not a lot. A lot of gold plating, though. I like that, even though it's thin. It'll come off in the Eagle Gold X Gold Stripper. Now that I've got this out, let's see if I can get this nut off. I don't seem to... It's probably metric. I don't have metric nut drivers. Hoping this is the last thing holding the riser board to the main board. Hoping. Hmm. Tight. Maybe they put some thread locker on it. Or maybe the stud is turning. Let's see if I loosen it up enough. Come off. Yes! Alright. Okay, there's the riser board with all its lovely gold pins. It's got uh, lots and lots and lots of data pins here. And it's got some big chunky power pins here. It's got a fair amount of gold plating. It's got some uh, gold plated. Uh, Headers here. That's a nice little board. Fair amount of gold there. I like that. Okay. And here's the main board in all its glory. All right, let's uh, have a look under these heat sinks if I can get them off and see what's hiding beneath. Ah, Gold Corner BGA. And another. And another. Cool. Let's see here. This one, no, we're not so lucky. This is just going to be a flip chip. Yeah, that's just a flip chip. No value to the flip chips. And how does this heat sink come off? I don't know. Well, when in doubt, apply brute force. Yeah. And another flip chip, unfortunately. Got a lot of heat sinks here, though. Of course, again, unfortunately, I took all my scrap aluminum to the scrapyard the other day. So I'd start a new box of aluminum heat sinks. Okay, let them pile up again. All right, so good stuff here. Gold plating, gold corner BGAs, um, lots of sockets and connectors with gold pins in them. I mean, all these ram stick sockets have gold pins in them. This socket has gold pins. The compact flash socket has gold pins. Uh, this module that was in here, the socket has gold pins. Lots of gold plating. Got the two lines of gold band oscillators over here. I've never seen so many gold band oscillators. Those are tiny, tiny ones, too. Interesting. Uh, let's see. And, of course, lots of gold plating on both sides of the board. Lots of tantalum capacitors. And, of course, 
everything's surface mounted, so all this stuff will come off in the kiln when I uh, depopulate the board in the kiln. Everything will come off when the temperature of the kiln gets above the melting point of solder. Um, we got some uh, gold pins on along the back, quite a few of them by the looks of it, power and data. But uh, these I will take off before the board goes in the kiln because I don't want the plastic parts to melt and entomb all the gold inside. And we are lucky, they are pressed in, not soldered in. So I'll be able to put a wrench on those and get them out, but I'll do that later. Let me finish disassembling this thing. i got another board and a power supply to get out. Now as for this board, these, actually yeah, it is, it is one board, not two. Okay, so the question is how to get it out. All this stuff's riveted and welded in so I can't take it off. Can I get the uh, screw gun down in there? Eh, maybe. Some of them I can get the screw gun down in there for. I'm going to have to go find a different screwdriver to get some of them out. Do it the hard way. Yeah, let me go find a proper screwdriver and see if I can get those out. Okay, so this is the right bit over here. Let me put it in here. See if I can get some more of these screws out. Doesn't look like there's a whole lot on this board, but there are some gold pins, and there are some connectors on the front with gold pins in them. A few components. I also see some uh, gold plating on the RFI shielding around this one back connector, so it's worth harvesting this board. There's also gold plating on the board itself. holding it in? That's a good question. There we go. Okay. Well, it's not double-sided, unfortunately. A little gold plating on the back. And not a whole lot on the front. Some LEDs, some push buttons, the uh, RJ45 connectors, a few components. And on the back, we got some more Yep, pressed in, gold pins with gold plating on the RFI shielding. They were serious about keeping the RFI down with this thing. I'll take the extra gold plating. Okay. So all that's left in here is the power supply. Let me see if I can get it out. It's a funky power supply. kind of doubt I'll have any use for it. It may just get recycled, but uh, let me get it out and have a closer look at it. Anyway, of course, my bending the sheet metal earlier doesn't help with this process any. bend it maybe the other way to get it out. I don't know how it went in. Sometimes it's really hard to tell how they put these things together. There doesn't seem to be any way to get stuff out. Let's see, what do we got here? Input 100 to 240 volts at 6 amps, 60 to 50 hertz. Max output power, 350 watts. DC output, 3.3 volts, 25 amps. 5 volts, plus 5 volts at 25 amps. 
plus 12 volts at 20 amps, plus 5 volts standby, 2 amps, minus 5 volts at 0.3 amps, and minus 12 volts at 0.8 amps. So yeah, it's pretty much like a standard PC power supply. It's weird form factor again, but uh, it's got a lot of the voltages that you find in a modern PC power supply. But, uh, also, well, I guess the connectors are fairly standard. But like I said, I don't think I really have a use for it. So it'll probably go in the recycling. All right, and then I got steel that goes in the recycling. All right, let me uh, have a look at these boards. This board, this board, this board need to have their connectors taken off. I'll do that in a minute. Okay, now I've got some more tools out here. I'll try and take these uh, gold-plated pins encased in plastic off the back of these boards. Yeah, well that was easy. It popped right out. Uh, I know it's showing up, but there's the gold pins are right in there, and this will come apart. And there they are. There's all the gold pins. Nice. Okay. Hopefully this will come off just as easy. Okay. I'm liking the Juniper Network stuff. The pins come off nice and easy. Sometimes I fight with these and I fight with them. Different manufacturers. Plus they use a lot of gold plating on their RFI shielding. I need to peel the RFI shielding off of this thing. Yeah, so that's got lots of gold plating on it. Put that with the gold pins. That'll all go through the gold stripper, get the plating taken off. Figure out how this comes apart. Expose the lovely gold pins inside. Good question. Actually, doesn't look like it comes apart, but maybe. Oh, am I going to have to pull all the pins out individually? I might have to. Every once in a while, I'll get something where I have to do that. To pull the pins out individually. Well, that's a project for a rainy day. Just sitting down doing that. Unless I'm missing something here, which I might be. It doesn't really look like it comes apart. So I may have to pull all those pins out individually to get the uh, lovely gold-plated ends... Let's have a look at some of these others here. Look at this main board. Ah. Okay. I see how it comes apart now because it just came apart and left all the pins in the board. Okay, so I see how it comes apart. See if I can get this one off. Oh, yeah, that one came off for the most part. RFI shielding off. Okay. Yeah. All right. Yeah. All right. So some of them are coming out, some of them aren't. Uh-oh. Pins went flying. i got to find that one. Sounds like it went over and landed in the chassis. Yeah, I see it over there. It landed in the steel chassis on the ground over beside me. Well, they're coming out. Okay. I need to get a container to put them all in so I don't lose them.
So, it's just a matter of uh, pulling the rest of these pins off of all these boards and exposing them. And getting them safely in some sort of container. Until I am ready to use the gold stripper on them and recover the gold. So, I am going to continue doing this. You don't have to watch the whole thing. Boring, tedious, and whatnot. So I'll get the pins out of here, pins out of here, pins out of here. Then all these boards, I think, will be ready to go in the kiln. I have seen these pins before, even though they are... All these boards will be ready to go in the kiln, with the exception of this one. I'm not going to put this one in the kiln because it is exceptionally difficult to get these sort of connectors out, even though they are pressed in. I have a lot of experience with them. Now this board has very few components on it, but it has a whole lot of gold pins and gold plating. This board I'm just going to put through the gold stripper first. I'm not going to do anything else to it. I'm just going to put it through the gold stripper, get all of the gold plating off of it, all of it off the pins, off the headers, off everything. And then I may just discard the board. It's only got like two IC, uh, five of little tiny ICs on it and nothing else really of value. So we'll see. But I'm not going to put this one in the kiln because these connectors will probably melt. And like I said, they're very difficult to get off the board even though they're only pressed in. These other boards, once I get these connectors off, they're going in the kiln and getting depopulated. And once they're depopulated, we'll uh, have a look at the pieces, sort them out. All right, I'll be back after that's done. <clears throat> oh, a couple last things before I put these in the kiln to depopulate them. First off, I don't see anything on any of the boards or any of the chassis pieces that is unequivocally a date code. So I have no idea how old this thing was. Now, the fact that it only had a Pentium 4 in it leads me to believe it's, it's probably fairly old. Now, one of these boards, this one here, kind of has a mark that might lead me to believe it's... 2005 but again it's not for sure so 2005 this would be what 16 years old now so that 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 probably about realistically could looking at the uh, at the components on here I wouldn't be surprised if it's about 16 years old so yeah nothing unequivocally a date code but um, I wouldn't I wouldn't be surprised if it was from 05 now these things over here, these two lines of things which I thought were gold band oscillators at first, on closer inspection, I really don't know what the heck they are. I've never seen anything quite like them. They resemble gold band oscillators, but I'm not sure that's what they are. They may be transistors of some sort. They have a Q part number, or they could just be quartz crystals. I am not sure. I may have to um, figure out what that part number is on there and look it up on Mr. Google because I'm not sure exactly what they are. If they're crystals, they'll go in my uh, crystal and oscillator collection. You know, if they're transistors, well, they'll get rendered down for their gold. Either way, they'll go somewhere. All right, without further ado, to the kiln. Okay, so here we go. All the parts uh, sorted out from that uh, Juniper Network switch. I have to say, it doesn't look so great sorted out like this. I mean, the number of IC chips is really small. I mean, we got some nice gold corner BGAs. That's great. But uh, otherwise, don't have a lot in the way of IC chips. I mean, uh, it, it looks like um, gold plating was basically what we're getting out of this thing for the most part. We got some... Uh, RAM sticks here with gold plating. Of course, there's some, some gold in the RAM chips, too. Got one processor, uh, the Pentium 4, 3.5 gigahertz, I think. Yeah, 3.4 gigahertz. So uh, that actually might be resellable. Got a lot of gold pins in here. Um, there's a lot of gold plating on these boards. This board right here is just just covered with gold plating. It's got gold plated pins, uh, it's got the power pins, the data pins, there's lots of gold plating on the board, there's gold headers. So uh, yeah, it's gold plating is basically what we got out of this uh, Juniper Networks device. All these boards have some gold plating on them. So they'll all go through the uh, Eco Gold X Gold Stripper and get the gold plating taken off. Um, we got uh, some 
connectors over here, some sockets, uh, RAM stick sockets, uh, Ethernet sockets, uh, uh, compact flash card socket, uh, some, some miscellaneous connectors with gold in them. That looks like USB, more USB. Uh, we got the got the processor socket here. See, these are surface mount. They come right off the board. And, you know, there's a lot of steel here, but with a little effort, you can pop that plastic part out, and that's that's got all the gold plating on it. I don't know if that's showing up at all on the camera, but that's that's all gold plated, and this can go in the steel recycling. Got some aluminum heat sinks. Got this big aluminum and copper heat sink. And what I might try to do is see if I can bust the aluminum part off the copper part because there's a couple pounds of copper there. And uh, I would hate for the scrap yard to uh, devalue it because of the aluminum attached to it. So I'll see if I can bust that apart. Hopefully it'll come apart pretty easy. Let's see what else we got here. We got some... Um, these are probably voltage regulators, I would imagine. Buck boost regulators, probably. There's a lot of them on the board. Makes me think it was PoE. I don't know, power over Ethernet. I don't know. Got a whole big pile of tantalum capacitors here. I'll add them to my tantalum capacitor collection. Got a few fair sized MLCCs, but they're all magnetic, so might be some silver in them, but probably not much else of value. Got a big pile of trash here. Just um, electrolytic capacitors, connectors that were not gold plated, headers not gold plated, whatever else fell off the board, inductors, whatnot. All pretty useless. Um, and then there's all these little things that I, at first I thought were um, gold band oscillators, but they're not. They're not gold band oscillators, but what they are, I still have no idea. They are some sort of component I have never seen the like of before. I have no idea what they are. And I've been trying to read the lettering on them, which I know it's not going to show up on the camera because it's way too tiny. I mean, I need a loop to read it myself. And it's all kind of smeary, like uh, their printing was smearing when they were making them. So it's, it's really hard to read and figure out what they are. I don't know what they are. Um, I'm leaning towards some kind of power transistor, but I don't know. I'm just, you know, from the number of connections on the back, but it's really hard to tell. Could be some sort of power transistor, power diode, I don't know. Could be counterparts of these voltage regulators, I don't know. So I don't know what they are. I don't know if they have any value to them, but... Uh, Got a fair number of them, whatever they are. Oh, and I almost forgot. We got some um, some oscillators back here. We got one gold band oscillator. For sure, that's a gold band oscillator. I mean, I mean it looks like those other things, but no, that's for sure a gold band oscillator. We got some, uh, what is it, five epoxy cased oscillators. All 25 megahertz, I think. And then we got one quartz crystal here. So we got that. Got these two flip chips, which are basically worthless. They're going to go straight in the garbage. As far as I can tell, they have no recoverable precious metals in them. Okay, so that's about it. Well, not a huge overabundance of good stuff. I mean, if you can get it, one of those Juniper Network switches for free, sure, pick one up. But I wouldn't pay for them, I don't think. There's really not much here but the gold, uh, the gold plating and gold plating really generally doesn't amount to much it's usually pretty thin i mean usually the ic chips in equipment will have a lot more gold in them than the plating does in this case i think it's the other way around just because there's so many so few chips so it's just going to be the gold plating that's kind of pulling our fat out of the fire on this one but uh like i said if you can get it for free it's probably worth it otherwise i would just walk away Okay, well, thanks for watching. I hope you found this interesting, informative, educational, whatever, any or all of the above. Give the video a like, give it a thumbs up, and subscribe to see future videos, and press that little bell icon that YouTube makes you press to be informed when future videos come out, because there will be more videos coming. They'll be coming fast and furious. So thanks again for watching. Have a good day. Bye.